Welcome back to the KDLT Sports Video Blog. It's it's been a little while since we've we've done one of these things. It's the end of July now, and football season's quickly upon us. It is. In fact, I spent earlier tonight when you were up shooting at the uh, State A Legion baseball tournament, going through who's playing who in the first week of high school football to get ready for Football Friday. Four weeks to go, if I'm not mistaken, until our, our first Football Friday. In case you haven't noticed, he's Mark Ovenden of Calling All Sports, also the KDLT Sports Director. I'm Zach Borg, the weekend anchor. And as we say, football season uh, right around the corner. And for us, it, it really kind of gets started uh, at Vikings training camp, which just started uh, about a week ago on Sunday. Uh, Minnesota reporting to camp. I was there uh, along with Max Jensen on Monday. We've had a lot of coverage. We, we have a lot more coming up, too, because they have their first exhibition game coming up, believe it or not, a week from Sunday in the Hall of Fame game. Uh, high expect that you can see right here on KDLT. Just good good plug. Yeah. Good plug. I, I can't forget that one or I might get fined. Uh, <laughs> or suspended. Nah, you won't get suspended. Because then I got to work. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's a lot of high expectations for this team. Um, it's kind of funny because I looked at it and I'm, I'm like, they're one of the youngest teams, if not the youngest team in the NFL. I think the average age is like 25 to 26. They do have a couple of veterans, but. You think to yourself, man, they're one of the youngest teams, so they might not have a lot of experience, and yet most of this team played together a year ago. Yeah, I, I don't know that you can look at average age and say, well, they're too young. Um, they were a, they, they improved a lot last year. I think there was reason for optimism. And when you consider the fact that they did what they did last year without Adrian Peterson, like why he was suspended or like him or not, he's on the Vikings. So um, With a year off and... Right. A year fresh. He should be. Should fresh. be. Yeah. Should be. I mean, he's 30, so um, that's not a good number for an NFL running back. But he's a little different than most of them. Look what he did coming off his his surgery that most people would be a year and a half or so recovering from, and he ran for 2,000 yards after what seven or eight months after his surgery. Um, the so, MVP. Yeah, and I I, I think he's going to be he's going to be fired up for this year. It's going to make Teddy Bridgewater that much better to have Adrian Peterson. He's got another deep threat now in Mike Wallace. Um, he was really good in Pittsburgh. I didn't think he was all that hot for Miami last year. But um, if he reverts back to his form that he was yeah. with the Steelers, he's going to be a huge addition to the team. Charles Johnson had a really good year last year. Kyle Rudolph, if they can keep him healthy, uh, one of the top tight ends in football, I think. So offensively, which has been... Probably the biggest question mark. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying they're going to put up huge numbers, but I think they're going to be a really good team on offense. And just having Adrian back is going to make Teddy better, because then the pressure of the team uh, succeeding is not all on his shoulders. It's been a long time since I can remember the Vikings really being set at quarterback. I know obviously they tried Ponder, but that didn't really last long. And Teddy had a good first year, and like you said, a lot more weapons back. And one of the unknown pieces that I'm kind of curious to see is what's Cordero Patterson going to do? Because his first year he was sensational. He looked really good last year when they had Adrian Peterson against the Rams. Yeah. And then he just completely fell off the table. And He's a first-round pick. If you get something out of him, that could really take him to another level. I mean, we at least know he's a good kick returner, so they give him a special team edge too. But True. I, I think the, the hopes for him last year were were you know, off the charts. I think people thought he was going to have a, a monster year because he's kind of a monster player when he's going good. Um, but I think he had a little hard time. I, You know, Zimmer's the kind of guy that if you're not – he's yeah. a Belichick. If you're not running the routes right, you're not going to play. If you're not doing things the way you're supposed to do, I don't care how talented you are, you're not going to play. This is Mike Zimmer speaking, not yeah. me. And I, I, I admire that. I respect Mike Zimmer. I think the players all respect him. And I think that um, we'll see. I mean, Patterson certainly, if he didn't learn his lesson from last year, he never will. That's one thing I got to say, too. I, I love Mike Zimmer. I think they've really found, I mean, I know these guys are kind of hired to be fired at some point. Yeah. But, I mean, especially when he laid down the law with Adrian coming into the, the minicamp situation, when it looked like Adrian wasn't going to report, he says he's either playing here or he's not playing. He, he made it. That ended it right there. And then two days later, Peterson's in camp. Like you said, he has their respect, but he, it's clear he's the man right now in that organization. Yeah, they haven't had a strong guy at that position for quite a long time. Um, 
you you might argue that Childress was strong in personality, but um, I don't think he had the players' respect. I I don't think he did, and and I I certainly think Mike Zimmer does, and ultimately the ultimately the proof of it is is how well they do. I thought they did pretty well with the team they had last year. I didn't Seven think nine, yeah. I I just didn't think that they had the kind of team that. Especially once the Adrian thing. Right. Well, that's yeah, what I'm that saying. Was, that I mean, was the key thing to me. he missed most of the season, and and Matt Castle was the quarterback when Adrian got hurt. So actually, you know, it it would have been interesting to see how good he and Teddy Bridgewater might have meshed. But we'll find well, we, out this year. Yeah, well, we've even seen Teddy if Castle doesn't get hurt, if Peterson doesn't get hurt. Maybe, who knows? Uh, on defense, we we talked about him on Tuesday night. Uh, Chad Greenway is now the old man on this team, literally and figuratively. Uh, it's a very young defense. They got a lot of first-round picks on that side of the ball, and, and Chad's kind of obviously near the end of his career. He's kind of—I think he's playing some more situational. He's not going to necessarily be every down back, but well, what a career he's really had for them. I mean, it, it's gotten to the point now where I think you don't—you see his, that number 52, and it's—it's it's hard to imagine him ever not playing for the Vikings at any point. Well, I, he's a Viking for life. I don't think there's much question about that. I'd be shocked to see him go somewhere else, especially with the fact that he's from Mount Vernon. I mean, it's like his home team. Um, but he's just really been a steadying influence on the team. He's he's never been a spectacular player, but he's been a really good player. And I think that's the ultimate compliment, that you can go 10 years in the NFL and be really good the whole time. And, and um you know, aside from the injury in his rookie year, he's he's really, uh, you know, I just think back to how dominant a player he was in high school, and uh, and and he's just taken that. He was men against boys when he was on the field in high school. It really was men against boys, and he's just taken that and and worked hard to make himself an even better player. At every level. At every he was a high school quarterback, and now he's a big, tough middle linebacker in the NFL. I think that's what we're going to have to bring up next year. If if he comes back for his 11th season with the Vikings, is to start asking guys, hey, did you know this guy played quarterback at one time? Too? Yeah, I'm sure his teammates would be shocked. Yeah. Last note for the yeah, Vikings. I think he probably couldn't throw a pass anymore <laughs> either. Well, we might get him to try after we start asking a bunch of them then, like see if he try to challenge Teddy for the starting quarterback job. Huh? <laughs> Don't think that's probably going to happen. Well, last thought on the Vikings. Obviously, the expectations are pretty high for this team. Probably the highest they've really been for well, they're since high. maybe since the Favre years. Okay, they're high, but let's also be honest here. Uh, they're in the same division with Green Rogers. Bay and Aaron Rodgers. They're in the same division with a very good Detroit Lions team that kind of got a limp. Well, what, think uh, back to. You know, the playoffs last year. They did year. lose in Dominic and Seuss. They lost one of their best defensive players. They did, but they had a lot of good guys on the defensive yeah. side of the ball. Uh, Calvin Johnson is maybe the most gifted wide receiver in the NFL. I, I have a hard time arguing against that. Matt Stafford's proven himself. He's a, he's a really good quarterback. Um, and Zach Center. I, I just watch for Zach Center. I, I think he's going to – I'm not saying he's going to – He's going to start. And, fire, no, but I think know. he's going to be a, an important part of that team. I think the Lions are going to be good. And, you know, I'm not so sure about the Bears. Usually the Bears are. New uh, coach, I, I, don't know which, I don't know what's going to happen there, but both Green Bay and Detroit are a really good football team. So the Vikings could be really improved and still not even make the playoffs. I was going to say, I'm kind of thinking they're in that 9-7, and 10-6 and six range for me. I, I think they at least contend for a playoff yeah. spot. Whether they get it, who knows? I found a stat too that since there's not been a second year Vikings head coach to have a losing record since their first head coach back in the '60s, which was Norm Van Brocklin. So typically, you do see improvement under the second year head coach. Uh, well, I, I, you I think should. that's yeah, you should. Yeah, but we'll see. I, I think it's going to be a fun year to watch them, and offensively, they should be really good. The Question is, how many of these, how are they going to do defensively? How many of these first round picks are really going to pan out? Because they've had, what, eight in the last couple of years? You, you've got to at least hit on six or seven of those guys to, I think, be a, have the success you're visualizing.